Uh, host, can you unmute RP Singh if he is facing that problem? Hello, RP Singh, can you, are you there? Excuse me, sir. He is there. So we are asking you to him to unmute. Okay, okay. Ah, RP. Hi. Hi. Yeah. So next speaker for today is uh, Professor RP Singh. RP Singh, as all of you know, that he is at uh, Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad, and of course you all have been seeing him in every meeting, and <laughs> he has been. Uh, doing very beautiful experiments on this uh, orbital angular momentum of uh, uh, light. So, but now with the Quest program, he has jumped into this uh, very fascinating area of um, quantum key dis experimental implementation of quantum key distribution. And his focus is on doing it in free space. Uh, so the title of his talk is Free Space Quantum Key Distribution. So RP, the stage is yours. Okay. Thank you, Tabis. And uh, thank you, Prashanji and colleagues for inviting me to be part of this QIQT. Uh, it's great that you are continuing with QIQT year by year. So, and so many people join. Uh, that's really great. So I will start sharing my screen. Yes, please Let me share. Where is the? I think this is the. Okay, this is the slides. Share. It has come now. Yeah. Can you make it full screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Perfect. So, okay. Fine. Oh. No. So as you see, uh, we have so many students, PDFs, uh, working along uh, each other and uh, producing results. So why I have given so many names uh, here? The purpose is that they are now scattered all over the world after doing PhD uh, from the lab. And uh, when we talk to them, and they are working in similar areas, quantum technology, quantum key distribution, quantum communication. So what do they convey to me that our lab, our labs are well equipped and we are not far behind to any of the labs in the world, okay? So you should feel, all of us should feel happy about it. What do they say? They say that we need a little bit of push. We have to work a bit harder, that's all. Otherwise, we are there. So um, when compared to what? So we are not far behind. That's what I wanted to convey. Uh, and it's really good thing uh, that your students are there and giving you feedback. So at PRL, uh, we have a quantum science and technology program, and it covers uh, like all the verticals of uh, quantum technology starting from quantum communication and quantum sensing, quantum computing, uh, quantum materials. So we cover all the verticals. We have a good number of labs covering all the verticals as well as theory guys. So when we say free space quantum communication, uh, why we go for free space quantum uh, key distribution? Uh, quantum key distribution basically is one of the applications of uh, quantum communications. So using quantum state, communicating through quantum state, you make the keys. And why do you make the keys? Um, that I think everybody must be knowing. When you want to, like two parties want to communicate uh, securely, they want to exchange masses and they want that no third party could listen their masses or intercept their masses. So they have to encrypt the masses. And for that encrypting, they need the key. And for de decrypting the message, also they need a key. So that is the need of key 
and in quantum field distribution, and that key is developed using quantum mechanical principles. So what was the need of developing these keys or uh, distributing the keys using quantum mechanical principles? Because with the advent of quantum computers, it was realized that present technique of distributing the keys, still we develop, uh, we distribute the keys, but present technique of distributing the keys can be compromised. They can be, key can be uh, like, this part, key can be known, like you can find out information about the key uh, using quantum computers. Like uh, these keys, like distribution of keys, uh, they follow uh, some quantum algorithm, uh, some quantum, sorry, not quantum algorithm, some algorithm, okay, computational algorithm. And uh, they are based on like uh, difficult, uh, like uh, computationally difficult problem. Uh, like uh, RS algorithm, uh, large number, time factorization. So, so very difficult to solve computationally and uh, that's why they are secure till date. But once these quantum computers come, these kind of uh, cryptography or uh, these kind of keys can be compromised and uh, one can have information about the keys which are being uh, distributed. Okay. So one has to have uh, another way to distribute the keys. Okay. So that's why this quantum key distribution and here it is uh, you communicate with states and you measure them and that's how you uh, develop the keys okay so that's the uh, quantum key distribution and why free space because uh, when you are sending this uh, photons or quantum states encoded through photons um they cannot go very far when you're using fiber uh fibers have attenuation okay and when you're sending quantum state uh, you know that they cannot be amplified because no cloning theorem. Uh, you must have heard uh, Taka Furbasi and maybe other talks also, you must have uh, heard this. Yeah. Quantum state, an arbitrary quantum state cannot be cloned. So it cannot be amplified. So uh, like normal classical communication, you can amplify the signal. You know that repeaters, amplifiers and all. But here, um, you have to use different kind of repeaters. You can't amplify the uh, quantum state. So you can't carry that information or the key very long. Okay, So that's why um, using fiber, you can't go long distances. Distribution of keys, long distances, you can't do. That's why you need uh, satellites to go longer distances. And satellite is quite long distance. So, so before going to satellite, because it will be 1,000 kilometers or hundreds of kilometers. So before going to satellite, one has to do free space quantum communication. Yeah, free space quantum key distribution. So that is the stepping stone for satellite-based quantum key distribution. Okay. So that's why this free space uh, quantum key distribution becomes uh, quite important. So how you do? Uh, you can do uh, using uh, two techniques, this uh, secure communication or uh, this key distribution, uh, key distribution using uh, satellites. One, you can use entangled photons and another is uh, weak coherent pulses or single photons. So when you are using entangled photons, uh, this entangled photon source is sitting in the satellite and you distribute this pair of photons and then you measure their properties, uh, which property you can measure uh, de depending on the uh, what, uh, which kind of entangled photons you have uh, prepared. Generally, we prepare polarization entangled photons. So you measure polarization and that measurement of polarization um, uh, makes the key. Okay, that's how you distribute this. And this is called uh, untrusted node because uh, this key is not there in the satellite. Okay, keys uh, with the parties only which are going to communicate. It's not there in the satellite. We are not storing the key here. Okay, that's why it's called a satellite is working as untrusted node. So this is entangled photon. And then this is another technique is weak coherent pulse a prepare and measure. That's called this is called entangled photon based key distribution. Another is prepare and measure. Or they, they use uh, weak coherent pulses or single photon source. So you prepare in a polarization state light um, photons and then you uh, send it to a ground station. 
and then you measure the polarization satellite also measures and this ground station you measure so after measuring the polarization state you get the key okay so k then you satellite goes to another station develop the key kb kb and then satellite has both the keys so satellite is having storing the key here so that's why it is called trusted node because you are trusting that nobody will be having access to satellite but satellite is having the key so so you, satellite has now both the keys k and kb so you uh, one can uh, xor operation one can do k xor kb and then it is sent to one of the ground stations and another xor can give you the key so now both the stations are having k and k now both the stations are having same key and then one can encrypt the station a can encrypt and send it to b and b can decrypt so this is basically symmetric key distribution where uh, both the parties are having the same key. So when we are doing this quantum key distribution, most of the time our, the protocols will date which we are using, they are mainly uh, this symmetric key distribution, both the parties are in the same key. So how do you do those things like uh, quantum key distribution? You require certain kind of equipment, uh, resources you require. So as I told earlier, uh, you use weak coherent pulses or single photon and angle photons. So how do you generate weak coherent pulses? You just take a pulse laser, you attenuate it, okay? You attenuate it using attenuator and you attenuate in such a way that um, per pulse there is less than one photon. So that's called weak coherent weak laser pulse or weak coherent pulses, whatever you call. So that's what. So on average, each pulse will have less than one photon and then how do you make single photons or entangled photons you take a laser you pump a nonlinear crystal and then one photon breaks into these two photons okay mm -hmm. and these photons are coming together and they are strongly correlated okay when you say entangled photons means they are strongly correlated, much stronger correlation than any classical system. That's why they are called entangled. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you measure property, like measuring the property of this, you can certainly tell what is the, because they're correlated. So you know the property of what will be the property of other photon. So that's entangled photon. And how you can make heralded single photon? It's obvious. Okay. If one you, they're coming together simultaneously. If you measure this, means there is another photon there because they're coming into pair. So one measures this or detects this photon, one can immediately know that there is another photon there. So that's how you can make a single photon source as well as entangled photon source using nonlinear crystals and a laser. And certainly uh, for transmission, uh, you need fiber. One can have fiber or quantum communication or quantum key distribution and a uh, free space. You need optics. Okay, You have to guide uh, light. So you need optics. You need all sorts of uh, optomechanical components. Okay, mirrors, lenses, um, beam filters, polarizing beam filters. You will see later. So And you need uh, mounts for that. So then you need detectors. So their source, transmission, okay, propagation, and then detection. So most of the time we use uh, avalanche photodiode, single photon detectors, but one can use superconducting nanowire single photon detectors. Okay, they are very efficient, uh, but they are very costly and bulky. Till date, they are very bulky and very costly. So that is the um, problem with superconducting nanowire single photon detectors. Mm -hmm. So this is a very popular uh, first protocol, first quantum key distribution uh, protocol, BB84. Okay, it was introduced in 84, 1984. That's why it's 84 and BB are Bennett and Prasad. Okay, so. This is a prepare and measure uh, protocol generally implemented with weak coherent uh, pulses. Okay, weak coherent pulses, uh, I think uh, uh, now you must be clear what is weak coherent pulses. So, per pulse less than one photon at the maximum photon. So, we prepare um, correlation state, okay, um, linear 
uh, and diagonal, like linear and diagonal. That's what you prepare in two bases. So horizontal, vertical, rectilinear basis, and diagonal basis, diagonal, anti-diagonal. That's what you are preparing randomly. They are prepared randomly. This correlation states. Okay, then uh, you assign a bit. Okay, you can assign bit zero or one. Okay, you can assign to horizontal, vertical um, um, bits. Okay, like uh, this particle is one assigned, and horizontal is assigned zero. Same way, diagonal and diagonal, you can assign zero and a, uh, zero and one. So, and then you send it, and Bob measures at other end uh, randomly. Uh, choosing the random basis, okay, rectilinear or diagonal basis. And if uh, bases are same, uh, they are accepted as E, otherwise they are discarded. You can see that here, uh, this is zero, horizontal. Um, but this is measuring in HV basis here. Bob is measuring in HV basis, uh, rectilinear basis. So you don't select it. Okay. And then here it is, uh, diagonal and then it's being measured in diagonal anti-diagonal like um, diagonal basis so that's why it is uh, taken okay same way uh, like vertical you assign v and it is being measured in rectilinear basis so it is taken as a key so that's how you develop the key and you get a, that is called shifting like shifting journey so this is called shifted a shift key then uh, you do the error correction and privacy amplification. Those are classical algorithms. Okay. Uh, very well established classical algorithms. You apply. Okay. Privacy amplification and error correction. And then you get the secure key. Okay. So uh, once you get the secure key, um, you can do the uh, secure communication by encrypting your message using those keys. So when you are using weak coherent pulses, as I told, this uh, prepare and measure uh, uh, protocols mainly uh, use weak coherent pulses. You may say, why weak coherent pulse? Why not single photon source? Because you get larger number of uh, photons uh, or larger number of pulses are available, larger number of photons are available. You get higher key rate. When you are using weak coherent pulse, you get higher key rate because it's still we cannot uh, we don't have very efficient uh, single photon sources or entangled photon sources giving a larger number of uh, photons uh, or photon pairs. So that's why uh, most of the time uh, we use weak coherent pulses because it gives higher key rate. So uh, because we're using weak coherent pulses, uh, so uh, they these being laser, they follow Poisonian statistics, okay? And uh, because of Poisson statistics, uh, statistics, uh, some of the pulses will have uh, more than one photons. So um, two photons or three photons, there may be some of the pulses might be having. So what uh, Eve may do, uh, that may lead to some attack. That is called photon number splitting attack because pulses are having more than one photon. So Eve uh, will intercept all the single photons which are there. And along with that, Eve may intercept like one photon of the two photon pulse and uh, one photon of the three photon pulse and let other photon go. So Bob may be receiving uh, photons anyway because there are two photon pulses and three photon pulses also there. Some pulses are having. But now Eve is having all the photons uh, and uh, when they communicate through a classical channel, when you are doing this uh, quantum key distribution, always you need a classical channel, okay, to reconcile the basis. Just to tell which basis Alice has selected, which Bob has selected, that's how you get the shifted key. So when they are talking about this uh, basis selection, what basis they have selected, he may listen and he will have information about the key. So that's very serious attack when you're using weak current pulses to photon number spreading. To avoid this uh, photon number splitting attack, what um, idea came like decoy state protocol came. Okay, decoy state protocol, you send uh, randomly some uh, pulses just to monitor the channel, if some EV is there or not. So uh, these uh, random pulses which you're sending along with signal, like where you have input information in terms of polarization states, um, they are there just to monitor the channel. And if there are like 
similar losses. Randomly, we are sending decay, uh, decay pulses as well as signal pulses, or decay state and signal state. Uh, if they are similar losses, fine. If there is like more or less loss in one uh, decay or signal, so you can say that E is there. Uh, so you can uh, stop your uh, key distribution and route your key distribution through some other channel. So this is the basic schematic diagram. As I told, classical chain is equally required and there is quantum channel. And the quantum channel is not nothing physical, like you are sending photons only, okay? And you can send photons through fiber or free space. Quantum channel means you are sending quantum streams. That's it. So this classical channel um, for uh, basis reconciliation, um, one can talk through classical channel or communicate to classical channel and you require this driving electronics to generate uh, random numbers and time tagging is very important. Uh, so you prepare this uh, four correlation state uh, BP84. Uh, okay, there are other protocols where you generally two correlation states B92, but here we are interested in BP84. Um, so you prepare them randomly in four polarization states and then send through, uh, you guide through optics and uh, they are collected by the Bob and then Bob measures them uh, using a uh, random basis selection. And Bob also records the time. It's very important. Uh, this time recording is very important because it has to be ensured that uh, Bob is measuring the same thing which Alice is sending. So time records are very important. That's how you get the right. So you can see the schematics. Um, here, these are the lasers, four lasers, and they are randomly being switched on. So one laser will make a particular polarization. Like uh, here you see um, this laser. Suppose. Okay, and let's concentrate. And these are the polarizing beam splitter. Okay. So, so this will make a uh, horizontal and vertical uh, polarizing mean splitter. What it does, uh, uh, it passes horizontal polarization and uh, reflects the vertical. So here you have horizontal and vertical. Okay, polarization. Here this is half a plate is sitting here. Okay, and this will make it uh, diagonal and anti-diagonal. So here you have diagonal and anti-diagonal and everything is combined, okay? You are sending through the same path, beam splitter. So everything is being combined here, horizontal, vertical. But at a time only one is going randomly, that also randomly, okay? That's what it is doing this electronics, randomly it is switching, okay? One of the lasers only. So at a time only one is going and all are going through the same path. It's very important, okay? Uh, there should not be like um, discrimination. One should not be able to discriminate. Otherwise, uh, E will have information. We'll talk about that later. So they, it is being launched there. And uh, this is uh, like Bacon laser, a reference laser, and just to align the system. Okay. So that you uh, Bob gets maximum signal. Okay. So um, this is uh, guided through this light is uh, our photons are guided through optics and reach to Bob and Bob makes the uh, measurement, okay, using these four detectors. So each detector will be having a uh, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, anti-diagonal. You know which, if it is like horizontal, uh, where it will go this uh, in which detector. So, and then you have uh, time records, okay. Uh, for uh, Ellis, or sender and receiver, both you are having time. So this is basically uh, what you can see that on optical breadboard, uh, this setup is made and then you can take it to the field because you are doing free space quantum communication. Uh, we have to take it to the field. And this is uh, basically a window. So you guide your uh, signal through the window and then you uh, uh, measure the receive signal, transmitted signal. So that's what arrangement we have made because uh, we were limited uh, by the buildings available uh, in our campus. We have only two buildings. 
that also not very far apart uh, in our Thaltis campus, only 100 meter apart, you can see that. So uh, on uh, one building, we had made two cabins uh, and then another building at top, we put a reflector here on a tower, we put a reflector here and this is reflected the signal uh, like transmitter here. So Alice, so this goes there and then reflect it and comes to receiver. Okay, so that's how we complete 200 meters. You might be wondering why we have not done 100 meter itself. We could have measured here itself. But what happened, I will, um, when I go down, you will see, um, we have taken a project from uh, DST, Department of Science and Technology, and we were supposed to show quantum key distribution for 200 meters. So we have to make it 200 meters. And this is, Fortunately, it is available. It was available. So we could make it uh, 200 meters. Okay. So by doing this. So that's what. Uh, um, then, uh, as I told you, time stamping is very important. So you know, this is uh, Alice is uh, sitting somewhere and Bob is at 200 meters around. So which kind of delay uh, you should give uh, that uh, you should know. So for this uh, 200, around 200 meters, if you are giving this kind of delay, 689 nanosecond, so you get the maximum number of uh, uh, photons, okay, in horizontal uh, polarization. And that will constitute the key. So here delay is very important. If it's just 0.5 nanosecond uh, mismatch, so you will get, uh, you will not be able to get this horizontally polarized uh, photons. So you are sending H and measuring H. So that's all that will constitute key. These are errors. Okay. Same way, uh, vertical because horizontal is being sent and vertical. So that will again constitute the error. You see a very less number of photons because horizontal. Uh, and then uh, just to check your system uh, because H, you know, uh, D plus A. Okay. So and uh, D and A should get equal number of photons if you are measuring in D and A. Okay. So you see that um, this is 250 and you see here it's around 400 plus, okay? So D and D you see almost equal, okay? Uh, if you sum, it will come around 450, something like that. So means our system is working fine, okay? So that's the meaning and now we can have key uh, distribution, uh, quantum key distribution. So that's what we did. And uh, then you have to have these parameters. You should know what is the uh, channel transmittivity, how many photons are being uh, lost in the medium. And overall detector efficiency, you should know uh, I mean photon number so that you can model your system and you can check whether you are getting the right key or not, right number of keys or not. Mean photon number, purpose, okay, here and repetition rate of the laser that is also important so here you see these are in indigenously developed uh, uh, pulse lasers so their uh, repetition rate is less but one can have 100 uh, megahertz or 50 megahertz and you can get higher keys because it is 5 megahertz repeated uh, laser uh, we get around uh, 200 uh, kbps shift key and secret key rate after this error correction and privacy implication we get uh, around 140 kilobits per second. That's the key rate we get. And our uh, quantum beta rates are quite less. Okay. So you can see that. That's why we are getting uh, such a good number of key. If this quantum beta rate increases, uh, so you have to account that into your privacy amplification and the key uh, reduces. Okay. So, but uh, as you have seen, um, we are using like uh, off the self uh, components, uh, sources, detectors. Uh, so they are not ideal uh, source or detectors or uh, upper optical components are not ideal, uh, like polarizing optics or attenuators, they are not ideal. Every, nothing is ideal. And our theory has been developed for this ideal source and detectors. Okay, so since you are not using uh, ideal uh, source and detectors, uh, they are mismatched uh, between um, pulse to pulse 
and that mismatch between pulse to pulse, which we are being collected by the Bob, can be uh, exploited by the U to gain information. So this uh, mismatch between pulse to pulse, and if you want to avoid this, um, like, so you have to uh, make them like uh, as close as possible. So one should always strive that all the pulses are as similar as possible, uh, which are being sent. That's very important in all respects. So like in time, like they must reach at the same time, same shape, same wavelength. Okay, those things are very important. But anyway, uh, you can't uh, do that um, um, completely match. So which kind of information leakage it may lead, that you can calculate and that, that can be taken care uh, of during privacy amplification. So that's what we have done here. Uh, we have a source characterization and that for side channel uh, attacks or side channel leakage, you can say. So what you do, uh, you do the cross correlation um, between um, and basically what you do using cross correlation, you measure the cross correlation of different uh, these pulses and uh, from that you can calculate uh, mutual information between Alice or sender and Eve and uh, mutual information between Alice and Bob and this mutual information between Alice and Eve will constitute uh, to the leakage. Okay. But it should be always, when you are doing quantum key distribution, mutual information between Alice and Eve should be always less than mutual information between Alice and Bob. Okay, that's very important. Then only we'll get the key. So here um, we have checked, as you see that Uber is very less and our system is working very good. So we don't have very large information leakage. It's always much, much less than uh, uh, the Alice and Bob. Okay. So you see, this is the mismatch between pulses, uh, source particle in respect of wavelength, in respect of time, arrival of time, in respect of uh, like uh, arrival of time, in respect of this bandwidth, like, okay. So there are many mismatch you can see, and even polarization you will see there is mismatch, so then special mode mismatch we'll see next. So because of that, you can have this kind of, one can calculate this kind of, uh, information leakage is possible. So you see this pulse minus three bits per pulse, but you are sending like megahertz. So it's quite a sizable amount uh, leakage is possible. So same way information leakage due to pulse speed arrival time wavelength. So you can calculate using cross correlation uh, of those uh, pulse. And uh, this is uh, like a special mode mismatch. Uh, then there is polarization uh, mismatch. Okay. And special mode mismatch again, 10 power minus 3 bits per pulse. And this is very uh, much higher, one order higher, 10 power minus 2 bits per pulse. So this correlation optics, uh, very good correlation optics is very important. Okay. Whatever you are sending, that only is being measured. Otherwise, there will be a lot of information leakage uh, is possible. And uh, your key rate will be reduced if you take care of that using privacy implication. Okay, so that's the, the information leak is uh, because you don't have ideal uh, source uh, with you. So uh, one always strives to have a higher number of keys, okay, because you can encode larger information. Okay? Generally, it is one to one, okay, one bit of information, one bit of uh, key. So if you want to encode high information, uh, bigger files, uh, then you need a higher number of keys. So it's very important to have a higher key rate. Um, you distribute keys at higher key rate. So uh, we chanced upon this uh, coincidence detection protocol, um, which gives us higher key rate compared to a DKI and VB84 protocol. So what we do here, uh, instead of discarding uh, two photon pulses, as I told, when you are using weak current pulses, there will be a pulses having two photons and three photons. So we don't discard rather. Uh, we use the coincidence detection uh, to uh, get higher key rates. So coincidence detection is at the heart of quantum uh, measurements. So, so we use that technique, coincidence detection, uh, to generate a hierarchy. That's what we use here instead of discarding this two photon, three photon vessel, uh, which is done in uh, uh, BB84 and the protocol. So, as you see, um, 
uh, we you can see possible uh, cases when you have one photon so transmission um, two photon pulses if they're incident and beam filter this is a beam filter and two photon pulses so there are three possibilities uh, both can be transmitted or um, both can be reflected or one one okay so this is possibility you can probability you can calculate similarly for three photon you can calculate the probability okay what are the and accordingly you can calculate this uh, coincidence that bob okay so that's the coincidence that bob and you see that uh, theoretical uh, values for different mean photon number purpose they are quite close okay um yeah. so that's what we have done and Basically, this um, setup, uh, you don't require much more uh, number of detectors or any extra thing. It's similar as BB84 and uh, Dekai state. You have four detectors here. And so instead of just uh, using one detector counts, what we are doing, you are using these coincidences between one and two. Okay. Or uh, two, three, and Say so, like two detectors coincidences we are using and uh, you are getting uh, three detectors coincidences we are using and you are getting a higher. So this is the key rate. Um, we will not get into these terms, just key rate. This is the formula. And you see uh, uh, when you are using just one photon purpose, okay. So this will be the key rate, okay. This is binary entropy, okay, S2 and so, but these extra terms plus you see these plus terms are coming and this will be always there when uh, you are using even single photon this minus term so these extra two terms that gives you higher key rate okay so you have higher key rate uh, because of this two photon and uh, three photon uh, pulses and these are the security parameters you always uh, measure this coincidence uh, detections so these fluctuations in coincidence detection you take around one uh, percent. Uh, and then this fluctuation um, by total uh, coincidence detections uh, that gives one of the security parameters and the coincidence detection divided by singles count that gives another security parameter so that we will see uh, in the next slide that we are uh, having secure uh, key distribution we have verified using coincidence protocol so you see that uh, um, our this um, um, Coincidence detection gives higher key rate, okay? That's what it is. Higher key rate compared to this decay thing. This is decay and this is our coincidence. So you will see here um, that uh, these are the values, model values, okay? Uh, theoretical values and these are the experimental values, parentheses like brackets. They are uh, values what should be there when it is secure. Okay, so these are the values, and you see they are well uh, within, well below those. Okay, so our communication is secure using uh, coincidence friction protocol. You can see we are getting much higher. We have uh, checked into field also, so we get much higher key uh, compared to this uh, BB84. So now uh, we uh, talked about this prepare and measure or BB84 protocol, and then uh, we go for entanglement based uh, uh, quantum key distribution protocol. Okay, so you have uh, seen that uh, BB84 protocol, you need this uh, random number. Uh, that's very important. And quality of random number uh, decides the quality of your key. If there is certain pattern in random number, or somebody can detect the sequence of a random number those numbers uh then key can be compromised but uh, when you go for entanglement based uh, qkd protocol uh, you don't require this random number extra random number uh because this uh we'll see the setup because being sweater uh, does the job of uh, random number random selection so uh, how you generate entangled photons? Uh, you take this nonlinear crystals, and uh, you have uh, already discussed. So you pump with laser. So one photon of the pump is converted into two photons. Okay, signal and idler. It is called. And in this process, uh, this um, 
energy and momentum uh, both are conserved. Okay, this is momentum conservation. This is a pump photon signal idler. Okay, this is conserved. Same way, uh, like uh, energy is conserved. Okay, signal idler at this pump. So, so this is uh, one of the setup um, uh, to produce entangled photons, uh, and that's what we are using in our lab. And using uh, this setup uh, has been converted into very compact like uh, um, box. Okay, uh, this is like very small, uh, less than one feet, uh, ten inch by ten inch. Okay, something like that. So very compact uh, entangled photon source we have developed uh, in our uh, lab, and this same design uh, it may fly as a payload uh, to study entanglement in the space. Okay, entanglement and uh, achievement of chemistry. Mm -hmm. So it may fly into space also maybe uh, in few months. So what it does here, uh, this pump photon 405, okay, um, it goes uh, to the nonlinear crystal. This is dual, this is dual polarizing insulator, dual lambda by two probe. Dual means it works for 405 nanometer as well as 810 nanometer, okay. So this pump, it goes nonlinear crystal that is converted into two uh, photons and uh, this is NAC interferometer. So both ways you are pumping uh, this crystal and then you generate this is a uh, type zero down conversion so uh, photons which are coming they are having same polarization hh and bv and then you combine here so finally what state you get hh plus pv okay that kind of entangled state you get uh, using this technique uh, type zero um, uh, PP, this is PPKT crystal, um, periodically polyKT crystal. And this temperature is very important. You have to maintain a very precise temperature, then only get uh, like uh, entangled photons. Otherwise, you will not get entangled photons at 810. So, once you get this pair of photons, you have to measure, you have to see whether they are really correlated in polarization. So, this uh, analyzer, uh, that's what it is doing. Uh, they are measuring the correlation in polarization. So what you observe that they are really correlated uh, in polarization and that's why because they're correlated, you get this kind of fringe pattern, okay? As you see in difference here, polarization correlation, there is field correlation, okay? You see the phases are correlated. There, here, correlation is correlated. So you get this kind of uh, pattern. And then from that, you get a parameter that is called Bell parameter. You can calculate using this pattern. Um, so that is 2.63. So that means it should be like more than two. Okay. Uh, then only you can say your uh, photons are entangled. So we get quite good number 2.63, uh, much above two. So uh, that's how we verify our photons are entangled, which we are getting through uh, this source here okay and then uh, we checked uh, robustness so you can see that uh, it's uh, even at 3600 seconds uh, there are not much difference between our singles count so and that will like very constant uh, coincidence count also that will be too and then we check the fidelity by quantum stratigraphy and that is also good a point uh, nine seven five. so we are very close to the ideal entangled state Okay, maximally entangled state. So that's how uh, you do. That's how you measure the this bell parameter, which is uh, which signifies that your uh, you know, photons which we are getting they are entangled. Basically, as I told earlier, also that uh, this coincidence detection is at the heart of this uh, quantum uh, measurement. So you have to measure this coincidence detection. So at different polarization angles, you measure the coincidence detection. Okay, n. n is the coincidence detection. So for different polarization angles, you measure the coincidence detection. And this coincidence detections then uh, will lead you to the correlation coefficients. And when you plug in this correlation coefficient into this expression, that will give you this bell parameter. And if it is less, it is classical source. There will not be entanglement, um, quantum entanglement. And if it is uh, more than two, it will be 
uh, quantum entangle, but its value is bound by two root two. So maximum value will be two root two. So maximally end basically. So once we get this entangled photons, uh, one can have a quantum key distribution using entangled photons. Okay. So and we have chosen BBM92 protocol because it's very much similar to BB84 protocol, except that we are using entangled photon. So here we are not uh, like preparing and uh, sending, and there are no Alice, and uh, Alice is not sending, and Bob is uh, receiving. Here, entangled uh, photon source, it's uh, communicating like it's sending to Alice as well as Bob, and both. Uh, are measuring in random basis. Okay, that's what they are doing. So rectilinear basis and diagonal basis randomly they are selecting and they are measuring. And same way they can reconcile the uh, basis and uh, then they get the shifted key. And then uh, you can check the error because here you see this is diagonal. Uh, this is anti diagonal. This is diagonal. So that is error, basically why is error. So you discard the final after this error, you get this key. Okay, this is the shifted key. This is the after error correction. So very similar to BB84, uh, except we are using entangled photon and you will see what is the advantage. Um, so a similar collecting optics, uh, time tagging, uh, detection, uh, okay. Uh, classical channel, quantum channel. Here, there are two quantum channel because two photons, pair of photons are being sent differently. So that's what here you see here. Uh, this beam sitter now. Uh, this is very important. So here, this is entangled photon source. Okay, this is a mirror. So two photons are guided to different uh, Alice and Bob. Okay, this is going to Alice. This is going to Bob. Okay, launching optics similar like in BB84 um, per field. And then uh, this is coming here. So now this is beam sitter. Okay. So that beam sitter, this is single photon here. Okay. This pair of photons, two photons only, one going this way, one going that way. So beam sitter, when single photon comes, you don't know whether it will go this way or that way. So beam sitter does the random selection job for single photon. So that's how you avoid the using of random number generator, separate random number generator, beam sitter does, does the job for entangled photons. So that's very uh, good thing about this uh, entanglement based uh, quantum key distribution. So uh, same way you measure uh, using four detectors, all the four polarization state uh, using time tagging, time information, you get the key then. Okay, and this is the setup. Alice setup. This is the entangled photon source. This is Bob sitting in the cabin at the terrace. And uh, this is the elaborate setup. Uh, you can see this new building. There are only two buildings. You can see the Google map. That's a problem. So this is reflector here. Okay, this is Alice cabin, Bob cabin. And then uh, here we have done for 35 meter also because uh, there is wall available here. Okay, we can put mirror here. So, and this reflection will make it uh, 35 meter. And here, this is 200 meters. So, so, we have seen this setup earlier also. This is entangled photon source going to Alice, to Bob. Okay. And then uh, you get this kind of, um, after distributing over 200 meters, you get this bell parameter 2.54, okay? And this uh, visibility of fringes, okay, quite good, okay? You can see that, uh, and uh, using that fringe pattern, whatever you call, um, uh, correlations, using this correlation correlations, one can measure the bell parameters. So same way here, time tagging again, very important um, because distances have changed. Uh, you can see that if you would have noticed, now it is sitting in the same uh, cabin. So distances have changed. So that's why this delay has changed from 689, it has become 648 nanosecond. And because uh, it is HHVB, uh, entangled photon state, so H, and then you have to H detector. So that's what you are getting, okay. So that's what it gives HHVV, okay, and D and A, 
So this diagonal, uh, if you do the sum, you will get the key. So that's what we get key. I still, Q bar is quite low, 4%. And we get uh, this kind of a secure key at 1.7 kilobits per second. So these are the parameters, atmospheric parameters. Uh, also, we have uh, this data um, for extinction uh, coefficient, uh, mega meter inverse, or uh, scattering coefficient also mega meter inverse, and uh, microgram per meter cube. This is uh, particulate material which are less than 2.5 microns. So that's the atmospheric data uh, because we are sending. Uh, our photons through uh, free space or through atmosphere, one should have this atmospheric data to model uh, your key rate. So on two dates, uh, we have this atmospheric uh, channel uh, data and uh, we have uh, got this kind of uh, key rate. So one thing is very interesting uh, for 35 meter and 200 meters, both we have calculated the key rate and we have uh, not calculated, we have uh, observed the key rates for both as well as calculated also. So uh, these key parameters follow the atmospheric channel. You can see that that's a very interesting thing. Uh, that's what we have observed uh, while uh, having these atmospheric parameters that our key rates follow the atmospheric uh, parameters. Our atmospheric parameters follow the key rate. Okay. So one, uh, if one is doing a satellite-based quantum key distribution, um, one can have like atmospheric parameters at the same time. Okay, that's uh, so one can do two jobs at the same time. One can have key distribution as well as information about the atmospheric parameter. That is the added advantage when we're doing one uh, when one is doing a satellite-based quantum key distribution. So uh, that's the thing we are doing uh, in our lab. So we have done for 200 meters, we could have gone for higher distance, uh, there is no problem. Uh, easily one can go for similar optics, uh, one can go for few kilometers, okay. Maybe instead of one inch optics, uh, you will have to use two inch optics uh, for collection and guiding. And that's the only uh, thing uh, will change, uh, one can go for few kilometers. Um, otherwise telescopes uh, are available, okay, parabolic mirror setup. Uh, one can do use them. Okay. So just um, we can do a far higher distances as well. That's the meaning. So after that, this is that's what we are doing uh, in India until now. So let's go to the international status. Uh, what is the international status of the field? Um, so Chinese scientists um, have sent a satellite in uh, 2016, and they have taken the leader uh, role. Okay, in satellite based quantum key distribution. And uh, they have uh, linked even two ground station um, in Asia and Europe. So, intercontinental uh, quantum key distribution they have uh, demonstrated already. And they wanted, they want to have like a global QKD network uh, using satellites by 2030. So, they have taken the leadership uh, and they have uh, like uh, measured the entanglement by distributing photons for so far of distances. Like we have sent 200 meters, they have sent 1200 kilometers, okay? And they have measured the, because they sent the satellite, okay? If we are able to send the satellite, we could also measure. And uh, one may say why we have not sent a satellite till date. You will not believe uh, we have been pursuing this since 2015 uh, before satellite uh, China launched the satellite. But somehow decision has not been taken at the highest level. But we have been pursuing at the top level since 2015. So uh, since they could send a uh, satellite and send photons uh, so far up, so far up, they could measure entanglement uh, for photons situated so far. So, and using that entanglement measurement, they could uh, get the key and they could do the key distribution using entanglement as well as they had like a satellite BB84 setup also. So they have done like uh, using BB84 also decay state quantum key distribution also. And using those keys, they could uh, do the uh, video conference, okay, uh, using uh, between Vienna and uh, 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 like Beijing. Right. 
So that's what they could do a uh, very long distance quantum key distribution or quant uh, using this quantum key, uh, they could uh, do the secure communication. Okay. And uh, Chinese have done that, but it's not like there are no other country. Uh, Italy has also done. Uh, they have shown that uh, using satellite, one can have uh, this quantum key distribution. In 15 itself, they published much earlier than uh, China. Okay. So they have done this VPT4 kind of uh, key distribution. Uh, okay, one station. But they have done just one station. They showed that it's feasible. And then uh, Japan has also done B92. Um, and they launched quite uh, early in uh, 2015 itself. They launched, but uh, they published in 17 only. Okay. Um, and their system didn't work for very long, but still they could get the key. Okay, and they published quite late. And there, this uh, ground station was very compact, as well as there, this payload uh, carrying the um, uh, quantum payload uh, was very small. Okay. Then Germany has done uh, much earlier, 13 itself. Okay. Um, um, not with satellite, but uh, aircraft um, at 20 kilometers, the same way they had like round station and they could uh, make the uh, key. Okay. Same way prepare and measure. All of uh, these are like prepare and measure, but China has done like entanglement based also. Okay. Although they get very small number of keys, they don't use these keys uh, for secure communication, but because they are very small numbers, okay. um, there are limitations using entanglement. So what uh, we have done um, under this project, as I told you, free space quantum communication, road to satellite quantum communication, uh, that was the project of DST uh, we have taken. So uh, why we have taken, uh, because as I told, since 2015, we are pursuing with the government that uh, we should have satellite-based quantum uh, key distribution, uh, quantum communication, but nothing was moving. So um, in 2019, um, uh, DST uh, gave us this project. So in that project, the idea was that we will develop uh, ground stations such that those can be used for satellite uh, quantum key distribution when the satellite is launched. So in that, uh, we have done all those things and we have developed and now we have um, they made it more robust. Uh, so the actuation, okay. And uh, then um, we have done this quantum key distribution using entangled protons as well as uh, um, weak current pulses. And uh, then we have end-to-end -end encryption of audio and video um, using entangled proton that also we have done. And the side channel, as I showed you, side channel uh, leakage we have studied uh, working towards development of uh, ground distribution. That's what uh, is our aim. So we have completed this uh, first phase under this project and we are looking for uh, funding for second phase, uh, which is quite a big amount. Uh, I don't know when uh, we will get and uh, whether we will get that much. Although DST promised us they will give after completing the first phase. Uh, so it is around 145 crore if DST gives it um, good. Otherwise, anyway, life will go. So um, that's the satellite payload uh, design for BB-84. You can see these four lasers, okay? Um, four lasers here, as you have seen earlier. And combined into one, they are launched to the satellite. And then um, you develop the key by measuring here, pollution state as well as ground. And RF, this radio frequency, radio wave. Uh, that acts as a transceiver, like uh, that acts as a classical channel when you're using satellites, okay? And if you want to do entangled photon, you have to put here entangled photons. I, along with this, you can have entangled photon source, but when you are putting entangled photon source, you have to use two telescopes because you are sending two, uh, you have two quantum channels. So you have to guide two photons to respective ground stations. So, uh, so in satellite, you have telescope. You can't have large telescopes. So in satellite, you will have a smaller telescope, 20 to 30 centimeter telescopes. While ground, you can have one meter or 80 centimeter telescope. So that's what you do. And RF is doing a job of classical channel. 
So in ground station, again, four detectors you see here, uh, they are measuring the quantum states, circulation states, which are being uh, transmitted. Okay. And the classical channel for uh, this RF thing is being used for this basis reconciliation. So future plan, uh, effort of turbulence, effect of turbulence, that's what we are studying and how to mitigate uh, it uh, when we are doing this quantum key distribution. And um, we are simulating uplink and downlink condition. And certainly uh, we feel that uh, downlink is always uh, giving you a better key rate and that's what we are doing. Uh, development of uh, device independent QKD protocol. That's what we are doing using entanglement uh, based quantum key distribution. Then entanglement swapping and quantum teleportation. That's our next thing after studying quantum uh, entanglement for 200 meters. And uh, as uh, Tabis uh, introduced that we have been working with vertex beams and other structured lights. So we want to use them to our advantage for more robust and secure quantum key distribution. And uh, this is okay, fine. So thank you. Uh, open for question. Uh, we have six minutes. Yeah. The base. If anybody is there? Yeah, yeah, we are here. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Ah, no yeah, problem. I, this is online. Uh, no. Doesn't matter. No, I was muted. I couldn't unmute. Uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Peace yeah. Out. Uh. yeah, so the talk is open to questions. People are free to ask. Yeah, if there are any, yeah. I have yeah, been giving this yeah. talk for so many times. Can I ask yeah. one question? Yeah. See, RPG, you are... Hmm. Uh, Mentioned, you know, do you do you see any difference between uh, these two protocols, BB84 and the other one, entangle based? Yeah, protocol? yeah. What uh, what did you ask, Prashanji? Did you see any difference when you know in open, uh, you know, three hundred meter? Yeah, difference meter. in the sense that because uh, entanglement, uh, you don't get very large number of entangled photon pairs. Okay, so key rate is less. Uh, otherwise, uh, photons uh, at same wavelengths so of per atmosphere, they will behave in the same way in atmosphere, except key rate will be less uh, because you don't get very large number of entangled photon pairs. Mm -hmm. And that's the limitation. That's why we don't go for single photon or entangled photon because we don't get very large number of integral photons mm -hmm. compared to weak current pulses, which can go up to 100 megahertz or gigahertz. So for single photon and entangled photons, there is not much difference between the two. Yeah, you just uh, do the heralding, you get single photon. And entangled photon, you use the both the photons. Okay. So because key rate uh, will be similar. So that's why even single photon, they don't use. Hmm. So it's still like they're using quantum dots and other sources, but it's still uh, they don't have like very high number of photons per second, either photon pairs or single photons. Sir. Hello, uh, can I ask you a question, sir? Sure, sure. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, you know, thank you, sir, for your nice uh, presentation. And uh, I want just query that in quantum computers, we work in the cryogenic yeah. temperature. So I yeah. IBM Q or this Google, mm -hmm. but here you are talking about this uh, all in room temperature, right? No, 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 no. So this is like room temperature only, uh, only but uh, when it comes to detection, uh, still they are using this uh, superconducting uh, in an when it comes to detection. Otherwise, computer as such is like um, this photonic things. So it is uh, at room temperature only, all the chips and all they are at the room temperature. But detectors, if you have to have, if we see in detection, uh, this uh, you are working at uh, photon level, single photon level, and you are doing quantum computing where each photon is very important. So uh, still uh, all these Janadu and every, uh, all these companies, they're using uh, superconducting nanowire single photon detectors. And for detection, they, had, uh, they require still cryostat. But otherwise computer as such, this is uh, at room temperature, yeah. So you know that that receiving end we need the this uh, room there means uh, receiving end we need the detector is in the receiving end right receiver yeah re receiver 
or you know or it is a transceiver both then we need this cooling okay uh, okay okay uh, you are talking of communication i thought you were talking yes. of computing yeah both okay, both communication both, communication both. so um, when you are doing the satellite based uh, quantum key distribution uh, you can have uh, when you are doing bbat4 certainly you have to have detector in both okay satellite as well as ground station when you are doing prepare and measure okay okay and then uh, prepare and measure it's really really uh, difficult to carry like sns queries then you have to uh, have uh, like avalanche photodiode only and but if you are doing entanglement based you can have ground station um, and there you can have sns queries because satellite has quite a big uh, backup lab so there you can have like sns queries only uh, in this Okay, but prepare and measure. You can't carry like SNS queries. They are still very bulky. So uh, there you have to have avalanche for that. Uh, and both sides, like uh, sender and receiver, both have to uh, measure or detect. Uh, and that's clear satellite, now. Yeah, in the uh, just one query that in the satellite payload, you are talking about yeah. satellite payload. Yeah, where the uh, there is no communication as uh, computing only communication. Yeah, when I say satellite, uh, basically it's uh, a computing. I say means quantum computer. So yes, it's yes. for communication. Satellite is for communication, not yeah. computing. Mm -hmm. So satellite that computing is not required. You know, just yeah, you computing know. Uh, is different uh, ball game. Uh, that that's why I didn't uh, tell about uh, discuss about that uh, part. Yeah. It is for some different talk. Yeah, and uh, that is also the normal temperature in the satellite payload. A uh, normal temperature. Normal yeah. temperature. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? You are, one more question, RPG. You said mm. uh, you know environmental condition, some uh, strong correlation with the uh, you know number of photons. Can you elaborate on that? What what Prashanji? You said strong? you know the mm. environmental condition and uh, your number of key rate. Was... Okay, 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 okay. Because yeah, environmental condition. Anyway, uh, that that's the good part. Uh, okay, so. How do we study atmosphere? Like uh, lidars, you you know that lidars are being used, lasers are being used. Mm. So and they work on like uh, what is the absorption, okay, and uh, return signal you measure. Right. So same thing here, light only you are using photons and you are measuring like attenuation, okay. So it will give you the atmospheric parameter as well along with key, okay. That's a good part. So you are having all the both the information. Because you're using light only here, you are measuring much more precisely the right? photon in terms of photons more precisely. Mm -hmm. So that's how it follows this key at mm -hmm. key rate will follow the atmosphere. Okay. So you can have both the information. And anyway, you use lidars and laser thing. Yeah. So here you have more sensitive determination. Very good point. Yeah. So RP, we have also been reading that this quantum key distribution technology is commercially available. So the story... commercially available, right? But it's uh, still only prepare and measure and point to point. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, so that's what I point to about. point and, and uh, fiber prepare optics, and measure. fiber optics based or something else. Uh only fiber based. Uh is still uh, there is no like commercially available pre space thing. Yeah. Okay. Only fiber based. Mm. There are two, three companies, not many. Okay. Uh, but it's available. ID Quantic, Toshiba, these are the two standard companies. Which probably Commercial. But fiber is yet not crispy. Okay, then uh, we have uh, five. We have yeah. plus five. Uh, we don't have any other tag, I think, after this. Uh, I, uh, so I think we this brings us to the end of this session. Yeah. So, RP, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you Tavis. Yeah. And I uh, and I will hand the charge to the organizers if they have any announcement. Our Team has something to announce, or otherwise we close this session. No, no, sir. Uh, schedule is uh, today's schedule is completed. So uh, tomorrow we'll be starting at uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Who is giving talk first talk tomorrow? Guru Prashad Kar. Okay, Guru Prashad. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah. thank you. See you. Bye -bye. Okay, okay, RP. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah. Uh, bye. Thank you. Prashant. Thank you. Thank you, sir, everyone, for attending.